In this video, we're going to go through and demonstrate some of the recent changes in Microsoft's PL400 Microsoft Power Platform Developer Exam. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So the PL400 exam is one of a chain of exams you can take on the Power Platform. There's the PL900, the fundamental level. There's the PL100, which is the Power App Maker. The 200, which develops the skills that you've had for the PL100, the functional consultant. The PL300 focuses on Power BI. And the PL400 is for you if you want to develop your knowledge from the PL900, 100 and 200 exams and extend the Power Platform through developing in C Sharp or JavaScript or various other languages and platforms. So you must have a strong applied knowledge of Microsoft Power Platform services. So you'll get this from the PO100, for example, and a basic understanding of authentication, security, and application lifecycle management practices. So if we scroll down, we can see that the skills measured are in six broad categories. Create a technical design, configure Microsoft Dataverse, create and configure Power Apps, extend the user experience, extend the platform and develop integrations. Now, the majority of what's new in the PL400 compared to the PL100 and 200 is in these later sections, as well as creating a technical design to support them. So what has changed recently? Well, let's go into the PL400 study guide. The changes which have happened in July and September 2023 I'll basically let's throw everything out and rearrange it and put it back and add a few things and subtract just a couple of items. So if we go down, let's have a look at things which are covered in the PL100 and 200 exams to start with. So you may already have prior knowledge of this if you've done those exams. Describe security capabilities of the Microsoft Power Platform, including data loss prevention policies, security roles, teams, business units, and role sharing, fully dealt with in the PL100 exam. Design automations, including Power Automate cloud floors and real-time workloads. So cloud floors in the 100, real-time workflows, I think, in the 200. Configure business rules. I think that's been moved from the 100 into the 200 exam. Describe the difference between unmanaged and managed solutions, that's in the PL200 exam, and utilize Power Automate cloud flows to implement business logic from a Canvas app. And that's been moved from the PL200 to the 100 exam. So new items which are specifically more about developing start with the application lifecycle management. Now this section has been trimmed a bit. So gone are implement source control for projects, including solutions and cord assets, and describe how to use package deployer and associated tools to create a package. New is manage solution layers. So you've got all of these various unmanaged managed layers. How do they interact? And we can find this out by going to a solution, looking at an object, clicking on the dot, dot, dot next to it, and going to advanced and see solution layers. So you may have multiple layers and each one of these could have updated properties. The next thing to have a look at, previously we've had optimize canvas app performance. Now we've got optimize model driven app performance including forms and views. So if I go to a table and go to the forms, so we've got all of these different forms. So with forms themselves, we're looking at things like moving objects from the default, the primary tab into other tabs. That's because this default tab is loaded first. Also hiding controls you don't need, using an up-to-date browser and the solution checker, and things relating to JavaScript and the open form method. With views, we're looking at limiting the amount of data that is there. So for example, we could be reducing the number of columns that we need. We could be applying a filter, reducing the number of rows or records that we need. And also having appropriate indexes in the table so that filters and sorting can use them. Going back to the study guide, if I scroll down, 
then the create custom connectors has been extended somewhat. So first of all, import definitions from existing APIs using open API definitions was there, but then we've got Azure services and GitHub. And we can do these by going to more, discover all, scrolling down to custom connectors. It used to be just on the left hand side, but it's now a more expanded thing. And going to new custom connector, and we've got create from blank. We've got these imports as well. Create from Azure service, import an open API file and import from GitHub. You will also need to create a custom connector for an Azure service. So in this example, I've created one for an Azure function. So there is my definition with the query and we can test it as well. We've also got extending an open API definition for a custom connector. So this involves, for example, whether it's required, the visibility, the drop down type, and we can see this in the Swagger editor where we've got things such as description, summary, and lots of things starting with X hyphen MS hyphen. If I scroll down in the study guide to the configure power automate cloud flows, we've got managing sensitive input and output parameters. So if I go to a flow, I can click on the dot 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 and go to settings. And there we've got secure inputs and secure outputs. Speaking of secure, we've got implement Azure key vault and Microsoft Intra ID service principles. Intra ID is the new name for the Azure Active Directory. So, Key Vault, we need to be able to set up a Key Vault and then use it in a flow. So, here we've got, for instance, Get Secret from Azure Key Vault, but I'll just close that. And we also have to use a Microsoft Extra ID service principle. So if I go into connections and look for my key vault connection, so here it is. So if I edit this, you can see that we can choose the authentication type of service principle authentication, and then choose a client ID, client secret, tenant ID. So all of these would come from an application registration, which would be controlled by an Azure group. And then we've got the key vault name. We'd also have to configure Azure key vault to use the application registration. Going back to the study guide, we've also got configure trigger filter. We previously had retry policies, but the trigger filter. So this means you don't necessarily want to have a flow which runs every time something happens. So if I create a new automated flow, so when a new response is submitted, do you want this flow to run absolutely every time a new response is submitted? So if not, then we can go into the dot 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 for the trigger, go to settings and then add a trigger condition. So specify one or more expressions, which must be true for the trigger to fire. Moving on to the next section, develop integrations, publish a Dataverse event by using the iService endpoint notification service. So this allows me to connect, for example, to a service bus, an Azure service bus endpoint that have previously registered in the plugin registration tool within an assembly. So I don't need to just have everything being sent to a service bus queue. I don't need to create a step for that. So the key parts of what you need for this is to get a reference to the iService endpoint notification service, change the context as you wish, and then send a message, publish the event using that reference to the iService endpoint notification service. So here I'm connecting to a very specific service and I'm posting the updated context. And then the final new item, if I go back to the study guide, is use the upsert request message to synchronize data. So previously there was a more generic perform operations on data by using the organization service API, but here is something very specific, the upsert request. So 
if I turn to a different plugin, you can see that we are creating a new row, adding a fax to it, and it may not be a new row. So what the upsert request does is say, if it is a new record or row, then insert it. If not, update the existing row or record. So that is the upsert. It's a combination of update and insert. So these are the new topics in the PL400 exam. And if you'd like a guide to them, then I hope you consider our course. So if you go to our website, idodata.com and click on Power Platform, you can see we've got courses on the fundamentals, the app maker, the functional consultant, and the Power Platform developer. Now this developer course extends the knowledge that you have gained by going through the PL100 and PL200 exams. So the PL100 course is about 16 hours and the fundamentals course, which is useful, is nine hours. So if I was to try to repeat things from that course into the PL400, that would make the PL400 really long. The PL200 course is around 11 hours. So in this course, which is around 11, 12 hours, we will be looking at extending the user experience, extending the platform, developing integrations, and all of the other requirements for the PL400 exam. This includes all of the new topics. There was around an extra hour and a half recorded for those new topics. So if this is of interest to you, then please go to idodata.com and click on what courses might be of interest to you. There will be a link in the description to these courses. Well, thank you very much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how to create a Power Automate flow from scratch by using Copilot, which is Microsoft's version of artificial intelligence. If you'd like to see that video, then please click on the end screen. Or why not join me for other videos about the Power Platform? There will be a link to the playlist on the end screen as well. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.